Now, look at this. It's a fantastic picture of me and Debbie, very lifelike, and it's been drawn by Caroline Cooper, who lives in Red Ruth in Cornwall. Great, Caroline. Thank and she's you. also written that she thinks the new network control is groovy and trendy. She and certainly it does. Is. Now, though, brand new series of Bellamy's Bugle. <laughs> my new punk up-to-date look. It was designed by Lucy Hollett from Dover, one of the winners of the fancy dress competition from the last series. Punk computer, whatever next. But I thought this week Bugle was all about spring. Well, spring means out with the old and in with the new. A different image, a new beginning. We're out of date, David. Old hat. What we need is a revamp. But I thought spring was all about all baby birds and lambs and spring flowers and hosts of golden daffodils, not safety pins and pink hair. Don't be a square, David. So, I have decided to launch BBTV, our very own film production company. And I've hired four brand new reporters. Kerry, Verena, Antonella and Janine. They wrote to me from Bournemouth. But what about me? Oh, don't worry. I have a totally new role in mind for you. OK, stand by, Studio Q, Alice! Hello, and welcome to Bellamy's Bugle Television. Today's programme is all about spring arriving in the countryside. Spring is a busy time of the year for all farmers but especially sheep farmers, as this is the time of the year when all lambs are born. We're up here on Mr Johnson's farm to see how the lambing is getting on. We're on a farm in the Durham Hills, so spring comes later here. Mr Johnson, what's it like being a sheep farmer at this time of the year? Well, it's a very busy time of year because, as you can see, we're lambing, and uh, hopefully we have nice sunny weather at this time of year, but when it's wet and miserable like this, it's very difficult because we have problems travelling around and it's very wet for the newborn lambs as well. What about this lamb here? How old is it? He's just half an hour old and uh, very soon his mother should have another one to go with him. It's very cold here. Um, is this lamb in any danger from the cold? Well, hopefully he should be all right because now that he's got onto his feet, he'll soon be able to get in and get some milk from his mother. But uh, she's having a long time having the second lamb, so we'll just have a look and see what the problem is. There is a problem, it's coming backwards. The sheep is licking the lamb clean, and it also keeps, <laughs> gets it warm and gets it going. It's all part of nature so that it'll get sucked and keep himself warm and then get on with the job of living. Then how long will it take before it gets up? Well, they all vary, but you can reckon that within half an hour the lamb will be well on its feet. And um, you can see the first lamb now is trying to go in and get milk from its mother. But uh, it'll take him possibly an hour before it gets steady enough on its feet to uh, know what it's doing and, and get the milk. Fantastic. Well done, girls. And the first double birthday on Bellamy's Bugle Television. Sue Lawley is going to have to watch out, you know. Right, and now back to Alice in the studio. End board. Oh, um, <clears throat> oh, um, welcome back to BBTV's report on spring in the countryside. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, please do not adjust your sets. Uh, ah, there. Spring is a very busy time on the farm, uh, but in our gardens it is a very colourful time of year, as Kerry and Verena find out as they visit a very special garden. Come on, David! We're on the air! Action! And here we are today.
today at St John's Hall, high up in the Pennines. And today we're going to talk to you about daffodils. Now, out of all the flowers in your garden, the daffodil represents spring the most. What? I'm trying to film here. The daffodils haven't opened. What do you mean? They must have done. It's spring. They've opened in Bournemouth. Well, they haven't here. What are we going to do? Let's get someone. Um, 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 David! David! Come! <laughs> the daffodils haven't opened. Oh, oh, what are I, going to do? I could paint the snowdrops yeah. yellow. Get props! Aiden, get props! 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 What? Props! I have to do it all myself. What are we going to do? do? We must think positive. What would your reporter do? Look for an expert. Yes, yes. Yes, good idea. Um, Me. Oh. Are you hello. an expert? Well, well, sort of. Do you know about daffodils? Well, just a little bit. Well, maybe you can tell us why these daffodils haven't opened. I think it's probably because we're up in the north of England, you see, because spring comes much later up here. And of course, here, we're very much higher. We're about a thousand feet up or so in the Pennines, so it's much, much colder for most of the year. So spring's going to be that much later. Hmm. I don't know what variety these are. But I thought all daffodils were the same. I mean, daffodils, daffodils. Well, no, they're not, you see. There are lots and lots of different kinds. There's actually a book which is called the International Daffodil Register, and it's got thousands and thousands and thousands of different sorts of daffodils. And the man who actually started all this off lived here, this chap called William Backhouse. Well, he was a, a banker, you know, William Backhouse. He actually worked down in Darlington in the family bank down there. Hello, hello. Oh, there you are. And Peter David, Hello, too. David. You haven't bought your bike, have you? Not this time, no. Dang. Good. Well, there's the daffodils. Hey, that's great, Dave. Where on earth did you get those from? Well, the miracles of Bellamy's bugle television, of course. <laughs> Look, they are all different colours, just as Peter said. Yellow ones and orange ones. Beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. No smell, though. <laughs> but who planted these ones? Well, I think we can be pretty certain it was a probably old William Backhouse himself. Yes, but you said that was about 100 years ago. Ah, yeah, but you see, daffodils are... Well, all plants are marvellous, but they have a bulb down the bottom of you. Then up comes the flower, and then the leaves stay put and make more energy and put it back down into the bulb. And then, of course, the bulbs can split and we get new ones, more and more daffodils. That's a clever thing about plants, you know. So they could have been here for 100 years? Hmm, very likely, and I must say, it looks as if they need a little bit of thinning out. Thank you very much, girls, for all your hard work. You covered the spring assignment in a very professional way. Now, let's talk about next week's programme. Well, we could do spiders and we can go oh, the Answer that phone, David, please. Um, we're having an important production meeting. Hello, this is BBTV Production Office. Yeah, I'm the general dog body. Mr. Spelling, Hollywood, Dallas. Dynasty here. Hang on a minute. Here, Alice is a guy down here, and Mr. Spelling, famous producer from Hollywood, he wants to make an offer for BBTV. <laughs> I knew it. Hollywood, here I come. Watch out, Joan Collins and Sue Ellen. Alice is in town. Now, when do I start? Well, actually, Alice, Mr. Spelling is only interested in the younger members of the company. <laughs> They get to Hollywood, and I get this.
and David and Alice are back in two weeks' time. Now, tomorrow, Get Fresh is coming Get from Aberdeen. Fresh. Yes, and on Sunday, Get Fresh have a special on Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> on Sunday afternoon, there's the brand new series called The Honey Sea. And as I keep saying, and I don't think I've said it too often because I invented this, it's a drama with a sting in the tail. Don't yeah, you think yeah, that's good? I've heard that before so many times. I thought it was quite good. We'll see you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye. And we'll see you Monday, yes. Bye 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 bye. bye. Stop these dreadful images. <laughs>